couple of things. Uh, this is a very, very, very brief introduction. Um, when I ran this, it was about 35 minutes long, so I had to cut a heck of a lot. Just bear that in mind. Um, and also, in my abstract, I lied a little bit because I said I wouldn't focus on metal, and that is a dirty lie because I have very much focused on metal. So, if you don't like metal, I'm really sorry. But it is what it is. <laughs> Um, so, the relationship between politics and music is nothing new. Uh, in the 19th century, Richard Wagner was used pretty extensively by the National Socialist Party in their rallies. Um, and for the past two centuries, musicians have used music as a means of um, communicating their personal political opinions. So, the following is a summary of a project that I've been working on looking at how Viking Age history and archaeology has been used to convey alt-right and alt-nationalist politics. This work examines the ways in which the Viking Age has been used by musicians to highlight these opinions, why this period attracts those with these political leanings, and lastly how we as archaeologists and, history and historians can attempt to tackle this manipulation of the past, and obviously we're going to be debating this pretty heavily later. So, I said about Wagner being used in the 19th century. He's probably one of the best known examples. He used Norse mythology as character creation and his stories. Um, but in the 20th and 21st century, the Viking Age has been used to inspire lyrics, album artworks, promotional materials, and a range of, from a range of genres. Um, a really well known example being Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin, released in 1970. It has the lyrics. Where is what? There we go. The hammer of the gods will drive our ships to new lands to fight the horde and sing and cry about Halloran coming. The title slide of my presentation had a lyrical quote from the Swedish band Factory, often cited as one of the first Viking metal bands. Um, they used a significant amount of imagery and were very heavily inspired by the Viking Age in their work. Um, but more mainstream bands such as Iron Maiden have also used the Viking Age. Um, in their 1982 song, Invaders, they had lyrics that describe the Viking raid. Uh, these days, though, the most prominent genres that kind of engage with the Viking age are folk and Viking metal. Uh, <laughs> echoes. So, Swedish band Amal are uh, probably one of the more popular bands that engage in this. Um, they engage in the Viking age in their stage performances, album artwork, song names, they have some names that are really easily recognisable as being inspired by the Viking Age. So, with Odin on our side, Twilight of the Thunderbird, Guardians of Asgard. Um, but they do engage with material culture a little bit as well. So, if you have a look, this is their 2006 album with Odin on our side. And you can see it's been pretty heavily inspired by this guy here, one of the Greenstones in Scotland. Um, another genre that plays with the Viking Age a little bit is black metal, but I will discuss that in a little bit. So, we all know the definition of nationalism pretty well right now. Loyalty or devotion to a nation, a sense of national consciousness exalting one nation above all others, and placing primary emphasis on the promotion of its culture and interests. I mean, a love for one's country it's not necessarily a problem, it's not always negative, um, but extreme political opinions can take this to a bit of a damaging place. Obviously, an extreme example being Nazi Germany, you know, anyone that had any, didn't sort of subscribe to an idea was marginalised. Um, we all know that the Nazis used the Viking Age in their propaganda pretty heavily, um, and this one such example. Uh, they used myths and runes. It's even been suggested that Hitler himself believed that the Norse mythology could inspire the youth of Germany <coughs> to be more interested in the natural world. Um, also, the Viking Age has been used in nationalist art, um, especially in the late 18th and 19th centuries, especially in Scandinavia. By <laughs> just to back. Um, we see these depictions of very fair people, very wild landscapes. Um, this art has been produced at a time where, especially in Norway, nationhood was very important. 
Um, they've just come out of the union with Denmark in 1814, and then in 1905 left the union with Sweden, which possibly revived some feelings again. So, why the working age? It's really well documented that especially trading centres were a harbour of cultural diversity. We recently had stabilised token analysis from Repton showing that not all members of the great heathen army were in fact Scandinavian. We've got a lot of material culture finds that show inspiration from outside of Scandinavia. So Viking Age Scandinavia was in no way insular. What one second. So a lot of like folk metal, for example, uses the Viking Age in a kind of light-hearted manner. But it engages in a myth of sort of racial purity and hyper-masculinity, which in itself is problematic. Where this has come from is probably the Victorian period, of course. I'll leave on my slide. So a particular genre of metal that uses the Viking Age to kind of go beyond kind of light-hearted fun to a world of just racism, really, um, is a subdivision of black metal called National Socialist Black Metal, or NSBM. Uh, black metal in general has had its fair share of controversies uh, with murders, homophobia, church arsons, uh, largely through the 1980s and 1990s. Interestingly, the Viking Age has cropped up as being a reason for church arsons. Barbara Ness, who is possibly responsible for some of these arsons, compared the church burnings to what the Scandinavians did to England when they came over in the 8th and 9th centuries. Uh, and he specifically quotes Linda's farm as being ins inspiration. Uh, Barbara's a pretty key character when we're talking about this. He's written extensively about his sort of mythical Viking age. It's very aggressive, very racially pure. It's very, very warped, to be honest. Um, he has a one-man musical project called Bersam, uh, and he frequently uses the Viking age and Norse mythology as themes. Um, and the characters that, that he sort of depicts in his lyrics are all very fair, Light, light blonde hair, sky blue eyes, skin so fair it shines, that kind of depiction, which is pretty similar to what we see in the National Stars. Um, another example being uh, a German band called Absurd. Uh, Henry Mobus from the band uh, has made some pretty alarming comments. Um, he once when asked what inspires you, he responded with, I am very much motivated and awe inspired by the life and death of Adolf Hitler, who undoubtedly served the cause of the Aryan race in a manner I couldn't even dream of emulating. Which is, that's not even the worst. <laughs> um, unlike Vikernes, Mobus doesn't really discuss the Viking Age in his personal life or in interviews, but in 1999, uh, Sir released an album called Asgardry which has a wealth of examples of more mythology being used uh, side by side with pretty extreme viewpoints. One quote from this album goes, An Aryan blood flows in our veins, unalienated and pure. Our friendship, our brotherhood shall last forever. All Father watches and rules over us. All in Asgard we find death in battle. The Valkyries carry us to Valhalla. Deaconess and Mobus are really extreme examples of this um, and how they use the Viking Age, but it does show how, just how easily the past can be manipulated. So, say again, why the Viking Age? The myth that was created in the Victorian period shows the Viking Age as being a golden age of Europe, a time of masculine heroes, wild landscapes, as well as origin and roots being incredibly important in a time of nationalism which are all pretty prominent themes that you actually find in black metal itself. I said there are genres that engage with the Viking Age, not deliberately meaning to be problematic, but they still engage with this idea of racial purity and manly men and raiding and etc. Yeah. 
Um, but the old right use the past interpretation of the Viking Age as it appeals to their worldview. They reject the modern scholarship that emphasises the inaccuracy of this Victorian interpretation. Um, and recently, Frick has conducted a study and concluded that Odin is a wonderful hero for the white working class male, which, yeah, <laughs> great. So, we're going to talk about this later. How do we perceive archaeologists and historians? <laughs> I mean, I personally think social media is great. Um, look at the Anglo-Saxon debate again. Um, we see what come from that. It's got people talking, which is fantastic. Um, I think sort of pushing to sort of stabilise the token analysis research and things like that is really helpful as well. Um, there's been some pretty esteemed scholars that have engaged in some of these debates, especially the Anglo-Saxon debate. Um, so really just kind of pushing forward. But obviously there's a lot of problems that we already mentioned and we'll probably mention again. So yeah, as I said, this is a very, very, very brief discussion of my little project. Um, what I call the mythical Viking Age has been very influenced by the Victorian period. It's very white, very masculine, and it's been taken by the alt right and used as fact. They, yeah. The mythical Viking Age, it makes for excellent storytelling. Heroic deeds, raiding, pillaging. It's a lot more exciting than a tale of a farmer trying to support his family. But it's really important that this does not become fact in the public's eye. And by scholars engaging with the public, I know it's not ideal, but hopefully we can kind of do something about it. Thank you. <laughs>